Antonio Pierce was asked an interesting question about how practice went this week for the Las Vegas Raiders. After switching from Jimmy Garoppolo to Aiden O'Connell at quarterback, people were curious if the team did anything different. Pierce had a great response to this. He said they went back to the basics, technique, fundamentals, pad level, hand placement, making sure their eyes are in the right place. Tackling is going to be key, and they'll need everyone to step up. On defense, it's about breaking up double teams, staying connected, and taking care of the football. Basically, Pierce is telling us that the Raiders changed things up in practice this week. They returned to focusing on the fundamentals, much like what they did during training camp. Of course, they can't fully tackle each other at this point, but they can still focus on the basics, like technique, making sure they're setting the edge correctly, and wrapping up players instead of just trying to knock the ball loose, which has been an issue for the Raiders in recent weeks. Pierce mentioned they had a strong practice this week, and it's clear they're focusing on the small details. I'm glad Pierce is trying to mix things up, especially since things haven't been going well for the Raiders lately. Most teams at this point in the season are adding new things to their offense and defense. Early in the season, you run basic plays to see how well everyone executes, and by midseason, you're adding more complex elements. For example, we saw Josh McDaniels use some creative play calling against the Denver Broncos, where Devontae Adams ran a fake route and ended up scoring the game-winning touchdown in overtime. But for the Raiders, going back to fundamentals might actually be the right move. They have a new quarterback, and it's like hitting the reset button. The team has been dealing with injuries. Christian Wilkins is out, Max Crosby is banged up, and they've lost other key players. They need to refocus and remind themselves that the season isn't over yet. The Raiders are 2-3, and three, but they can still turn things around. If they get on a hot streak and win a few games in a row, they could be 6-3 or 7-3, and suddenly the playoffs aren't out of the question. But we need to recognize that this season is far from over. With Aiden O'Connell stepping in as the Raiders quarterback moving forward, there's a real chance this could actually benefit the team. One of the biggest issues the Raiders have faced this season is turnovers. On one hand, we're fumbling the ball, whether it's Zamir White or Jimmy Garoppolo. On the other hand, we aren't forcing turnovers on defense. That's the main problem here. Right now, the Raiders' turnover differential is one of the worst in the league. According to stats, we're tied for the second worst turnover differential with a minus seven, only matched by the Tennessee Titans. The Raiders have forced just one turnover all season while giving up eight on offense. Think about that. Now, if you look at the teams with the best turnover differentials, teams like the Bills, Packers, Vikings, Chargers, and Steelers, what do they have in common? They're winning games? A big part of their success is because they're winning the turnover battle. Even our coaches, like Luke Getze, have talked about this. They mentioned that one of the key differences between Garoppolo and O'Connell is that O'Connell should do a better job of protecting the football. Sure, O'Connell had an interception against Patrick Certain and almost threw another pick against the Panthers, but it's different when you're playing from behind and trying to force throws. When the game starts at 0-0, zero to zero, there's no pressure to catch up, and that gives the quarterback a better chance to make smart decisions. Going into this game against the Steelers, if O'Connell can protect the football, the Raiders will have a good chance to win. Winning the turnover battle is key. If you win the turnover battle, you're more likely to win the game. Take our recent loss to the Broncos as an example. We had three turnovers and forced none. In the first half, we were clearly the better team. We had more yards, more successful drives, but those turnovers cost us the game. The same thing happened against the Chargers. Turnovers gave them easy points. For example, Garoppolo had a bad fumble while trying to pass to Devontae Adams, and there was a miscommunication. These turnovers are killing us, but the hope is that as we head into this next game against the Steelers, we can stop making these mistakes. Now let's preview the game against the Steelers. It's an interesting matchup because the Raiders have Luke Getze, who worked with Justin Fields before. Getze knows what kind of quarterback Fields is, and Fields will be starting for the Steelers in this game. But here's something surprising. Fields wasn't even expected to be the Steelers' starter. Russell Wilson was supposed to be their main quarterback, but he got injured. Now, Wilson is healthy again, so while Fields is expected to start, there's a chance Wilson could come in if Fields struggles. This is something the Raiders need to be prepared for. Let's also take a look at the injury report. The Raiders are getting healthier, which is great news. Max Crosby is good to go, as is Divine Diablo. Diablo missed the last couple of weeks with an injury, but now he's back. Earlier this offseason, I thought the Raiders should move on from Diablo. 
but now I think they need to keep him, especially if he plays well like he has in the past. He looked solid before he got hurt in week one, and if he's healthy, he'll be a big help against the Steelers. Other players like Tommy Eichenberg and Amari Gaynor have filled in, but Diablo is the guy to watch. Michael Mayer, unfortunately, isn't ready to play. The Raiders placed him on the NFI list because of a personal issue. He's already missed two games, and now he'll be out for at least four more. Some rumors have floated around about Mayer's situation, but it seems to be related to an illness. I hope everything is okay with him and his family. The good news is, by placing him on the NFI list, the Raiders now have an extra spot on the roster, but Mayer won't be playing anytime soon. On the bright side, other players like Tyree Wilson and Jacoby Myers are expected to play. Antonio Pierce even said he's confident Jacoby will be ready. That's a relief because we need him out there. Overall, most of the key guys seem to be healthy, and I don't think there are any major injuries that will hurt the Raiders going into this game. Dylan Parham has missed some time, but he should be ready to go, and although Jackson Paris Johnson has a knee injury, he was practicing in a limited way. So we'll see how that goes. One key player to keep an eye on is Dylan Parham. We need to figure out if he's fully healthy because he's a big part of the offense. The Raiders are in an interesting situation heading into this week. Even though Dar Munford is questionable, it's not likely he'll take over the starting job. But here's the main thing. The Raiders have to be ready for TJ Watt. TJ Watt is a game changer, and he's going to be going up against DJ Glaze. This is a huge test for Glaze. He struggled a lot this season, losing too many snaps, and now with Aiden O'Connell back there as quarterback, Glaze has to step up and keep the pocket clean. With Watt coming off the edge, it's going to be tough, but it's not impossible for the Raiders to succeed if they stay focused. Now the Steelers do have some key players out, which is a big advantage for the Raiders. Nick Herbig and Alex Highsmith, both top pass rushers, are expected to miss the game. That's great news for the Raiders because a strong pass rush is one of the biggest threats to any quarterback. And without those two guys, it'll be easier to handle Pittsburgh's defense. Even though the Steelers still have guys like Cameron Hayward, TJ Watt, and Keanu Benton. Missing Herbig and Highsmith really weakens their defensive line. Plus, Corderell Patterson won't be playing, and defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal is also out. These injuries give the Raiders a real chance to come out on top. Lastly, let's wrap this up by talking about a recent signing. The Raiders picked up defensive end Zachary Carter. He was with the Cincinnati Bengals earlier this season, but they cut him. Carter was a third-round pick just a few years ago, and even though he hasn't reached his full potential, he's only 25, and with Antonio Pierce's ability to motivate players, Carter could be a valuable addition. Carter has mostly played as a defensive tackle for the Bengals, lining up on the inside. He's strong and could help the Raiders defend against the run, especially in situations where you don't want to put Tyree Wilson on the inside. While Carter isn't at the level of a player like Christian Wilkins, he brings some solid depth to the team and could make an impact. Another thing to consider is keeping players like Jarius Robinson in their best positions. You don't want to move him to a spot like the four or five technique when you've got a guy like Zachary Carter for that. The Raiders have been playing a lot of base defense this season, especially in the 4-3 formation, ranking among the top teams in the league in terms of how often they use it. So having enough linebackers and defensive linemen is going to be key for the Raiders. Additionally, the Raiders have officially signed Matthew Butler to the active roster, which means he'll likely play against the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've also brought back Marquise McCauley. It's gonna be interesting to see how these moves impact the game, but I think the Raiders have a real shot at beating the Steelers. There's no reason the Raiders couldn't start a winning streak, maybe even three, four, or five games in a row. Sure, there are some tough teams ahead, but we already beat the Ravens, one of the best teams in the NFL. In almost every game this season, the Raiders have been competitive, except against the Panthers, who were the only team that really dominated us. Every other loss, we've been in it, or at some point, we were even leading. The key to success for the Raiders is consistency, especially from quarterback Aiden O'Connell. If he can deliver, and if the offensive coordinator can step up as well, there's a lot of potential here. I'm excited to see what happens next against the Steelers. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time with another video.